Hello and welcome back to a, another Max MSP tutorial video. I am Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going over all the absolute basics of Max MSP. In part one we learned about bangs, we learned about messages and object boxes and patching things together. I definitely recommend you check out that video if you haven't seen it. But in this video, oh boy, in this video, we are going to talk about lists and variables. Um, what is a list? It's not anything to worry about, let me tell you that. Um, a list in Max MSP is just a group of integers or float numbers or symbols um, grouped together uh, as a list. And they're pretty easy to make. We can make them using this object called the pack object. And you see I have the word pack and then three eyes. These eyes stand for integers, which means we can send this pack object three integers in each inlet that it creates because I have three eyes um, and it'll pack them together into this awesome list down here like uh, we see. So I'm going to change that first number and it updated to be our list which is zero zero one and if I change it again you see it's going up. Now here's something that is going to happen. I'm going to change this integer number box but when I do uh, the update does not output. That is because this is a cold inlet. It's blue. It's uh, going to just set the integer value and not output uh, the entire list. Um, but this one over here, our first one, is a hot inlet, meaning it's active. And when I change this value, it is going to output. Cold inlets take the integer value and set them. Hot inlets take the integer value and output it. Um, and that's just the way it is. And this is done this way for many reasons. Um, sometimes you're not going to want to output your entire list at once. Maybe you're up trying to update all three of these at the same time. And if you were outputting the entire list at every time you changed one of these, uh, you would output the list three times. But have no fear, because of the pack and its cold inlets, we can set these and then change this one and then it'll output. But maybe you do want to actually output, um, change the output based on the integer value coming in. Um, and that's what this object pack is for. And then you see it's the exact same except it doesn't have the letter C in it. It is just P-A-K. So it's more like POC. And in it, we have three I's again for our integers. And as I change the first one, it updates and outputs our list. And as I change the second one, it also updates and outputs our list because look at that. It is a hot inlet right here. And similarly for the third one, it's a hot inlet, so it changes and outputs. Um, and that's the difference between pack and POC. And there are many use cases where you want to do either one of these. So knowing that both of them um, exist is very important and the difference between them and all that but also you know like both of them they just both create lists and that's all we're doing right now we're just creating lists and these are lists of integer numbers and we did have to define how many integers we wanted in this um, and I could you know unlock my patch and create another pack object and if I wanted you know this many integers it's gonna create this many uh, inlets for all of those integers, but what if we wanted float number boxes as well? What if we uh, wanted some float numbers? Well, then you have to use the F uh, like I'm doing here in this object. And now this will recognize float values and sure enough the object works the exact same but it does in fact output these float values. If I attached a float number box up here into this pack object, it's not going to work. We're not going to see the float values. We're going to see the whole integer values that it would round to or truncate it to. Um, alternatively, if you like, uh, you can use 000, zero, zero or zero decimal point, zero decimal point, zero decimal point to specify whether you want integers or float numbers as well. Um, just know you got to specify the difference between integers and float. That is something that uh, I will absolutely stress 
a ton to you if you are new to max MSP because very often you'll find that that is the difficulty that you may be having with your patch is it just you forgot to define float numbers when you're dealing with float numbers or something you know like that so and it's a very easy mistake to make I still make it all the time you know sometimes and um, that's just the way it is but at least now you know and you won't make those mistakes uh, anymore so now that we have uh, an understanding of the difference between pack and POC and how to create it and define what elements are in our list let's look down here uh, at this cool example where I have this POC object patched into this object which is called a swatch and it is outputting into this message box and also this message box over here that says BG fill color dollar sign one dollar sign two dollar sign three and that is outputting into this message box which has the BG fill color message as well but also some numbers in it right now and it's got this uh, it's outputting to this panel object which uh, is a nice cool red color right now and in fact it's that color and if I change this value up we see it's now that red color and this is a pure pure red color and I was able to change the color of this panel to this pure pure red color because I sent this one through this POC object into this and packed it into a list which we're seeing here in this message box and then it's showing what color that equals in the swatch object that's what the swatch object does we send it a list of an RGB color value and it shows us what our RGB color value is um, pretty cool the swatch is a pretty cool object definitely gonna do a tutorial video on that at some point in the future and um, if we follow our patch cables down we see we are getting a return of the same value uh, that we sent into it out of our swatch object which is also being sent into that BG fill color um, now we have this one with our dollar signs and then this one that matches our list values the dollar sign one dollar sign two and dollar sign three are known as variables in max MSP if you want to create something that can change um, you're gonna do a dollar sign one or dollar sign whatever number um, and what we're doing is we are sending the panel object the message BG fill color which is the message for the panel to change its color and we are defining that we want this value to change based on these variables and these variables are connected to our list so when we change our list values it updates and sends through this message and changes the color I'll show again because uh, our second object our second float number here is the second uh, inlet in our list it is the second value of our list and therefore it's going to change the dollar sign to variable um, and now I'm changing it and you can see we are indeed slowly adding more green to our red color and it is uh, becoming orange and moving up that swatch and um, it is updating here in this message box and we see that happening so we know that this awesome cool yellow color is this value in this list uh, for these colors and we see that everything's so cool let's add some blue into here okay well when we add blue we're uh, starting to get over and it's more white so if you're very very new to programming and you don't know when you have all of these values equal at 1 1 1 it's gonna be white when they're all equal at 0 it's going to be black but if we wanted a blue we could add some float value in the blue and have our red and our green be zero and look because the pack object uh, has a hot inlet for that third value it is updating when we change it and so now we're getting to see our blue color 
which is super sweet. I'm gonna take some of that out now, set it back to zero, change this one, get some green in there. Actually, let's add some of that blue back in. Ooh, that's a nice like sea foam minty color. Um, and if I wanted to, I can, you know, actually even just click on the circle in the swatch object and drag it around to a specific color in the spectrum that I want. And it's going to output a list of the that color that I dragged it to, which sure enough is also going through this patch cord into this message box. It's changing these variables uh, bec because it matches the list and that message with this list is then updating this panel to be that color as I drag the circle around. It's so cool. And that is just one of like thousands upon thousands of programming examples uh, that you're gonna need lists for and variables. So hopefully this makes some sense to you. I hope you learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe to my videos. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and that you are learning something and I really appreciate that. Um, if there are any questions, anything you feel needs clarified, please leave that in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I see it. Um, I try to be super quick, uh, especially now, since so many of you guys are actually watching my videos, which I greatly appreciate. Um, in fact, even somebody subscribed to my Patreon, uh, shout out right there. And uh, uh, thank you guys so much. Like, it really does mean a lot to me. Happy 2021. Let's, let's start the new year strong with some awesome Max MSP programming. And I will see you guys in the next video.